Good day everyone, how are you all doing? Today is another portrait editing session using another Photoshop extension panel called Retouch Pro. Let's see if it's any better than the previous retouching tools that I've previously covered on my channel. So Retouch Pro is claiming that it is the most advanced and powerful Photoshop panel ever created. It has more than 150 functions, including real artificial intelligence technology. It has face and body recognition that lets you quickly modify certain parts or areas with just a few clicks. At the time of this recording, it's currently on sale at 19 euros. I'll post a link on the description if you want to buy this panel. Alright, so let's open up Photoshop, check out this Retouch Pro panel, and put it through its paces. If you can't find the panel, just go to Window, Extensions, and then select Retouch Pro. So, this is the Retouch Pro panel. It has six main tabs or sections. Retouching for editing the skin, eyes, teeth, lips, and hair. Face for editing the eyes, nose, mouth, and form. Clothes for fixing or changing its color. Effects which contain one-click presets, overlays, and watercolors. Color grading which is used for split toning. And finish for doing a few more final touches before exporting. So let's use the Retouch Pro panel on this image right here. But before anything else, let's first remove the obvious and distracting blemishes and dark spots. Duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl J. Then we add a new blank layer. Then we select the Healing Brush tool and make sure that the sample is current and below. Then we press the Alt key and click a smooth area on the face to copy a sample. Then we brush over the spot that you want to remove, like so. Again, press Alt, then take a sample, then brush on the unwanted spot. I'll go ahead and speed this up. Okay, I think I'm done. This is the before. This is after. And now let's create a merged visible layer by pressing Ctrl Alt Shift and the letter E. Alright, now we're ready to use the Retouch Pro panel. Let's go over the Retouch section, another skin retouch. Let's click on Easy. So we just created a layer with a negative mask. Let's select the brush tool. Make sure that the color is set to white. Then we start painting on the face. For the sake of saving time for this demo, I will be quickly brushing on the skin. But for best results, do take your time and be as accurate as possible when brushing. Okay, so I'm done brushing on the face. This is the before, after. Let's zoom in. Before, after. Obviously, this is way too much. So let's bring down the opacity to about 50%. Now that looks more natural. Before. After. So what do you think of Retouch Pro Panel so far? Let me know down in the comment section below. As I have mentioned earlier, Retouch Pro has about 150 functions, so I won't be able to cover everything on this video. Let's just quickly navigate to some sections and try out some of their functions just to give an idea on what this panel has to offer. Alright, now let's try using texture. And again, we start brushing on the face using a white brush. Let's just fast forward this step. Okay, this is too harsh so let's bring down the opacity down to 50%. It still looks harsh. Let's decrease it to 25%. Okay, that's better. Let's zoom in. So basically, what texture does is add some details and contrast to the skin. Now how about we try the skin tone function. So we have here some skin tone options to choose from. Let's go with warm beige. And again, we paint on the skin using a white brush. Now to check what we have painted, select the mask, hold the Alt key, and click on the mask. 
Then we paint white on the black areas that we've missed. Then to go back, hold Alt again, and click on the mask. So this is the before, after. I could have probably brushed better, but this is just a demo, and I wasn't being accurate, so bear with me. Now let's try a different skin tone. Let's just copy the mask over. Click the mask, hold the Alt key, and then drag it over to replace the mask. Then we click yes. Then we just hide this skin tone to reveal the other one. Before, after. If you find the effect too strong, you can always dial down the opacity. Okay, so we're done with the skin retouch functions. Let's now go over to the eyes. Let's click on iris. Then we carefully paint white on the pupils. This is the before. After. So it appears to have brightened the iris and give it more vibrance. Now let's try the whiten function. Then we brush on the white part of the eyes. And this is what it looks like. Let's now try the veins remove function. Then brush again. So what it does is pretty much self-explanatory. Let's see what the final touch does. Let's brush on the entire eyes, including the eyelashes. Before. After. So it basically sharpened the eyes. Let's group the effects all together and see the overall look. Let's zoom in. The effect is too strong. Let's set the opacity to 70%. Still too obvious. How about 50%? Okay, that's better don't you think? Now let's go to the lips and teeth section and click on white teeth. Then we zoom in. And yes, we paint on the teeth. Now that's too white. So let's change the opacity to 35%. That's better. Let's add lipstick. And select this color. Then we paint on the lips. Before. After. Let's change the color to something lighter. I think this one looks good. Let's group the effects together and look at the difference. Before. After. So we've just whitened the teeth and added lipstick in just a few clicks. Let's now go to the hair section. And let's try the hair enhancer. Then we brush on the hair, like so. So this is the before. After. What do you think? Let's check out hair color. Then we select the layer mask. Select the brush tool. Make sure the color is set to black. And then we paint on all the areas except the hair. And once we're done, we double click on the hue and saturation icon right here. And then start moving the hue slider to change the color. Nice! We can also adjust the saturation and lightness if you want to. Now let's pick a color for the final look. Let's choose green. This is the original hair color and the new hair color. Not bad, right? Now let's go to the face tab right here. Then let me just play around with the settings right here real quick. I'll adjust the eyes, nose, mouth, and form. And let me group them all together and show you the result. Before, after. We can basically manipulate parts of the face to make it more pleasing and symmetrical. Please note that the changes that I've made here are only for demonstration purposes, and not as a comprehensive editing tutorial. I'm just showing you what this function can do. 
We'll skip this CS tab right here because this image doesn't have any clothes. I mean, she's wearing clothes but we couldn't see it. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Let's go to the effects tab right here. Just randomly select some presets. These are basically one-click filters to give a certain look to the entire image. Let's go over to water and see what it does. Let's move this layer on top and group the rest of the presets. And hide this group for now. Let's start painting on the entire image and let's decrease the opacity. Then let's go over to the overlay section and add rain effects. Let's also group the overlays. So, we've just added three layers of effects. We added a preset, water, and overlay. So, the effects section can bring out the artist in you if you wish to be more creative. Let's now go to the CG tab or color grading tab. Here we can add a split toning effect and add more color filters. Let's try a few split toning presets right here. Okay, now let's try these color filters. Let's select cold. Alright, that looks nice. How about warm? Uh, I don't like it. So basically, the CG effect is for split toning and changing the white balance. And we're down to the last section which is the finish tab. Here we have more options to add details, blur the background, change the background color, as well as add more contrast. Let's click on behind blur 1 and see what it does. Okay, so it appears to have blurred out the background a little bit. Now let's try color background. Let's pick another color. Not bad. And finally, we can save this image directly from the panel without going to the file menu above. So that was a brief overview of the Retouch Pro Photoshop Extension Panel. It is similar to the Photoshop retouching panels that I've talked about in the past, with some additional features like manipulating parts of the face, color filters, and changing hair color. For some reason, I couldn't find any documentation or instructions anywhere on how to use this panel. I guess this is targeted to experienced photographers and retouchers. Even on YouTube, I couldn't see any tutorials or reviews about this panel. Well, this was only released last July so maybe that's the reason. In conclusion, these Photoshop retouching panels almost work the same way, with a few additional functions here and there. But in the end, it is still up to your editing skills and creativity on how your photos will turn out. Consider these panels just as tools. It is still in your hands on how to use them correctly. There is no such thing as the best photo editing software out there. However, you can be one of the best photo editors if you consistently practice regardless of what software you use. Do you agree? If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and click on the bell icon to turn on notifications. Thank you for watching.